guy to step it up and he gave me that. It's called Mind Rape. It's a well, he only had three other batches. Uh, Gorilla Panic. Uh, they're coming, they're coming, and something called This is Permanent. Come on, spark it up. <laughs> Horns up, metalheads! It's time once again for another edition of Rock and Metal Revival. I am in the uh, parts unknown studio. Jerry is uh, in the always beautiful hookah lounge studio. How's the air there, buddy? Ah, uh, nice and nice and uh, a little bit, a little bit hazy, a little bit hazy. But we'd like to thank our friends at uh, Happy Sloth for making that haze there in the uh, yeah, hookah lounge yeah. studios. How you doing this week, bud? Doing all right. Doing all right, man. Same yeah, as usual. Beautiful weather. Yeah, it's nice. I've been nice lately, which is good. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and lots of good new music coming our way. Uh, yeah. and not as much this past week, but boy, in the past couple of weeks, we've gotten a lot of stuff in. And uh, so uh, we've got, we're going to throw some at you today, but also we're going to visit with Chip's Enough from the band Enough's Enough. And Chip is, uh, nicely put, a character. Uh, I bet he, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely a character. <laughs> I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to interview Chip a couple of times. Um, once when he was with Adler's Appetite. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he was on the bus. And then uh, I'm trying to think of the other time that we interviewed him. But, uh, yeah, Chip's a lot of fun. And it was fun to sit down. They got a new album out called Generation Brainwashed. We'll talk to Chip next hour. And uh, cool. we got a whole lot of great hard rock and metal coming up. Why don't we kick uh-huh. it off... Uh, I think we should kick it off with uh, some Bobo Flex. What do you think? All ballads again? Yeah, all ballads. Let's do it. This is Mama, Don't Take My Drugs Away. (laughs) Grab somebody special and hold her tight. All right, there is Saxon. And that song is uh, from their album Denim and Leather and Princess of the Night. Actually, dude, that was the only Saxon album I ever owned up until we started doing this show. Yeah, I think I had a couple of their albums, but that was that was one of them. And my uh, cover band back in the back when I was in high school, we used to play that song, dude. Some fast riffing there, man. Yeah, I always loved that tune, Denim and Leather, too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That they was had, really cool. They had some good songs, man. Still putting they out really good did. music too. So. Yeah, I, the more I listen to them, the more I dig them. Mm-hmm. And I liked Biff Byford's uh, solo album he did this year. Yeah, that was really good too, actually. That was a pretty good album. Uh, n- not very much hoopla, not very much push on that album. No. Did you notice that? The virus kind of put a big damper on his touring. He couldn't tour on it after yeah. because it just came out. And then, yeah, he couldn't do nothing to back it. So Exactly. Mm, yeah. That doesn't rough help. Rough one. Yeah. You know, I saw a possibility of uh, maybe an Iron Maiden. I was going to tell you this the other day. Iron Maiden Judas Priest tour next summer if everything's cleared up. Ooh. That would be cool. That would be cool. I'd go to see that. Yeah, I think I would go see that. And I think the other thing I would like to see is that one that I hit you up on Facebook about the other day, Symphony X and Primal Fear. Mm, yeah, that would be a good one, too, definitely. With Firefall, which is Gus G's band. Or Firewind. Firewind, yeah. Firefall, isn't that a country band or something Firefall, like that? Firefall, didn't they do uh, Wildfire? Yeah. That song, <laughs> that's something I don't know. Yeah, I know. My, your, Our friends from Happy Sloth got me going tonight, too. Uh, yeah, so uh, coming up next hour, we'll talk to Chips Enough. You've seen Enough's Enough, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, they played with Michael Schenker the one time. Remember oh, we saw him? Okay. That was the one band I got to see. And then yeah, everybody I'm, stood up, and I couldn't see shit. <laughs> I, uh, I can't remember that one. I, I actually saw uh, Enough's Enough when they played at Riverfest on a side stage in Beloit. Oh, cool, cool. When they had the first album out, when they still had Donnie V with them. Oh, okay, yeah. I really wanted to ask Chip about Donnie, mm. but I thought, nah, I, you know, I only got so much time. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to start a war either. I, yeah. I, I'm just, that's not my style. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but you could have told him we'll all the crap J- Donny V talked about him, but nah. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. We made some go. stuff up. That's what I would have did. <laughs> yeah, I just I stayed away from that as much as I possibly could. All right, uh, so I was just reading a story that said uh, Adrian Smith almost joined Def Leppard. Did you hear about that? No way. 
Yeah, back really? in 92. He no. almost joined. Uh, yeah, he uh, actually um, was uh, very uh, up for the job of replacing Steve Clark when Viv Campbell got the job. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I could see that. He could have yeah. done that, yeah. Because he yeah, can he's sing, the, too. Well, I, I guess he's got, Did you know that Adrian Smith's got a book? Yeah, it's just coming out. Something about yeah. fishing. Fishing and rocking. Rocking and yeah. fishing. Yeah. Well, I, all I know is that he said that I feel like maybe I might write another book, and I will tell that story in there. Ah, okay. So, yeah. But, yeah, that would have been interesting. Definitely, definitely. Very interesting. And speaking of Iron Maiden, let's get back to the music. Let's take one off my favorite Maiden album. This is from The Number of the Beast. This is 22 Acacia Avenue on Rock and Metal Revival. There's Skid Row and Peace of Me on Rock and Metal Revival. And uh, we're back in the studio. You know, I'm, I'm so tired of hearing about this Jericho Sebastian Bach thing. Yeah, it's gotten old. Got old fast. Hey, boys, meet out by the bike rack after school and get it over with. <laughs> And I, my money's on Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, you know, not the singing part, but the fighting part. My yeah, money's on Jericho. Part, yeah. so, even yeah, if I even was, if what they do is, isn't is uh, actually real, real, but still, he's still throwing people, agile, around, throwing people around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I saw this the other day. I was, uh, I was uh, listening back through the Klaus Mine interview, and I was just kind of, you know, surfing on the internet and i found out that you know did you know there was a dvd of the moscow peace festival oh no no is there yeah that's a that's only available i guess in it's a import oh okay dude i gotta get a copy of that i heard that that was one of the best concerts of all time yeah i remember when that was on tv on a pay-per-view or some or mtv or something they had some of it on there i remember seeing some of it yeah, the MTV the did thing. the US Festival too. I remember watching that too. I'm just surprised that nobody has, you know, like cleaned all that up and and put it out on Blu-ray or something, you know, because those are some great musical events. Yeah, that's for sure. And great, yeah. I'd love to have them. Be nice and to with have the, the and whole with the surround concert. sound systems you got now. Oh yeah, It'd be like being yeah. there. That would be outstanding. All right, it's time for our uh, news of the weird. And, uh, Jerry, we're going to start in your uh, former home state, Uh uh, the state of Florida. Oh, okay. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They they kicked me out. They kicked me out because I wasn't weird enough. (laughs) I wasn't doing stupid enough stuff. So they started. If you've ever met Jerry, that's that's crazy. All right. um, (laughs) The place is, uh, yeah, I know the temperature is hot, and it's got to be hot down in Florida in August. Oh, yeah. Yeah. this just isn't the way that uh, anyone, you know, when you get you get hot like that, you kind of want a you know, cool drink, maybe a Slurpee or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, this isn't the way to enjoy a Slurpee, I'm going to tell you right now. There's a 40-year-old guy, his name's Brian Duffy, and he's in Pinellas Park, Florida. Dude, that's where I lived. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Did, did you know Brian? Uh, I don't know. What is he doing? Tell me what he's well, doing before well, I say it. Well, a few weeks ago... <laughs> He went down to the Seven Eleven. You probably know where that's oh, at. Oh yeah, right? there's there's like seven of them right around yeah. there. And he got into an argument with the clerk about the price of a Slurpee. Oh uh. well, fe- yeah, the female clerk wound up taking the Slurpee away from Brian when he refused to pay the price, and uh, Brian slapped the cup out of her hand, and the Slurpee went all over her. Oh, nice. Now, okay. now get this. He was arrested for battery because of this. Oh, man. And since he had another battery conviction already on uh, on his uh, record, it's now a felony battery because he slapped a Slurpee out of somebody's hand. Whoa. Okay. That's that's a little excessive, I'd say. but uh, Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. kids, keep that in mind next time you're, you're thinking about doing something stupid like that. Yeah. When it comes um, to battery, stick with Duracell and EverReady. And Ever- Energizer. Yeah. 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 Hey, now, Jerry, you still got uh, the Packer bumper stickers on your uh, stabbing cabin? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. Well, get this. Bumper stickers don't always reflect how people really act. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, oh, yeah. I know you got those Packer ones on there. I know you you bleed green and gold. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it's like a person with a coexist sticker who gives you the finger. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or Jesus, well, this Jesus that, loves you, and then you yeah. know, they're, like, flipping you off. <laughs> Now, this past Saturday, I guess cops in Ironbridge, England, got a report of an SUV stopped by the side of the road, so they, they went and checked it out. Uh, it turned out the driver's uh, front left wheel had somehow fallen off, but he kept driving because he was hammered. 
Oh, well, that's yeah. a good when they breathalyzed, you get this, when they breathalyzed him, he was twice the legal limit. But the best part of this is uh, his Range Rover had a bumper sticker on the back that said, I'm not drunk, I'm just avoiding potholes. <laughs> And they still pulled him out? I, oh, yeah. well. Well, he was already thing, pulled yeah, over. Yeah. They uh, found his wheel, get this, a mile back. Nice. And man. it's not clear why it fell off or if a pothole had anything to do with it, but driving on three wheels caused enough damage to his SUV, his Range Rover, that it was totally totaled out. Man. Well, yeah, and now he's facing drunk driving charges, too. But yeah. Hopefully he can. <laughs> I'm not drunk. Hopefully he can salvage that bumper sticker. Yeah, he can keep that the bumper next sticker. Car, exactly. For your next car. Uh, next, uh, next, this next one, um, you know, the book of faces, you and I are like, have not been big fans of it for a while, but that's the only place you can really keep up with rock and metal revival. So stay on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I stay um, away from that, but, yeah. but this story comes from San Diego, Jerry, and, uh, I'm not sure anything has ever been more inevitable than this story right here. Now there's a Facebook group. Uh, that's all about people taking pictures of themselves pointing loaded guns at their junk. What? Yes. Oh, my God. Now, really? listen, they say it's huh. it's it's all to troll responsible gun owners who <laughs> would uh, say basic gun safety means they don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. All right? Okay. Okay. So they point a gun at their love gun. <sighs> all right? So, yeah, believe it or not, after all these pictures and Darwinism finally caught up with the group last week, Uh-oh. a guy in San Diego actually shot himself in the junk <laughs> while taking the picture. <laughs> no. Oh, that's one to... Uh, he said, Ugh. quote, it went through my uh, scrotum, my mattress, my box spring, and the floor. Uh, he had an entrance and an exit wound, uh, but was only in the hospital for one night, even went back to work the next day. How do you go back to work uh. and go... You're not going to believe what happened to me this weekend. I shot myself in the junk. Maybe he works from home. <laughs> That'd be the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his porn myself. career has been shot. Oh, man. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, now have, uh, the other guys in the group are celebrating this man as a hero. <laughs> really? For basically sacrificing his junk to prove their group's point, whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt, but... Oh, and last but not least, uh, this story, uh, kids go to bed. Uh, (laughs) It comes once again from the state of Florida. And just when you think you've seen every strange way an argument can end, Mm. there's a 48-year-old woman. Her name is Heather Smith, and she is from Tierra Verde, Florida. Verde. And on Saturday, she was on a boat with her 47-year-old husband, and they got into an argument. No. All right. Alcohol well, her husband involved. went. Yeah, he went down below below deck to sleep. He was not having it. But Heather wasn't done with the fight, my man. Uh oh. So she opened up the boat's perch or the port hatch. Okay. Okay. Which is directly above the bed, <laughs> and decided, well, yeah, he doesn't want to fight. Doesn't want to listen to me. So she peed on him. <laughs> he probably might have liked that though. You uh, better yeah, be careful, lady. Like that kind you of better stuff. be careful, lady. <laughs> yeah, and so when he went up to confront her, he was he was PO'd. Oh, and peed on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He uh, he was PO'd and peed on. Uh, he got a uh, little bit more than he uh, bargained for. She then bit him in the stomach. Oh. So she's peed on him. She bit him in the stomach, uh, so he took the boat into into dock, and she was arrested for domestic battery. He turned her in. Nice. <laughs> Man, <So. ouch. laughs> at least she didn't bite him in the junk. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, yeah, right. you don't want to pee on people, because you never know. They might like that stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. And then they're like, might hey, be into that kind hey of how much do I owe you for that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in a brothel in, in, yeah. in Bangkok, I paid big money for that yeah. one. Yeah, it usually uh, cost me quite a bit. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, well, maybe if he was a, you know, a politician, he would have oh. been into it. Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, that winds up uh, our news of the weird. Coming up, we've got some Talking Real Metal. And next hour, we'll talk to uh, Chips Enough of Enough's Enough right here on Rock and Metal Revival. Here's your latest hard rock and metal news on Rock and Metal Revival. 